Hi everyone and welcome back to The Week's Nest. In today's video, I have a top 10 Dollar Tree DIY farmhouse home decor ideas for you, part two. So this is gonna be a recap in no particular order of some of my favorite Dollar Tree DIYs I have done recently. I did a part one to this, which I will have down in the description box below. So let's get on into it. Dollar Tree DIY number one is going to be a super, super easy farmhouse cloche. Dollar Tree always has an assortment of sizes of their wire bins. I will be using the smaller one in the middle for my cloche. And this is super simple. There's not much to this. I like the white color as is. I just took the handles off of my bin and then I'm going to take one of these round unfinished wood balls from Hobby Lobby. You can use anything. You can use a marble, any beads you have on hand, something from Dollar Tree and really easy. Just apply some hot glue and add that to the top. That is all there is for this DIY portion of this project, but I'm going to show you the two ways that I styled it. Option one, I will be using this wood lattice charger from Legacy Home Decor and this really pretty eucalyptus or lamb's ear, I think it is wreath from Hobby Lobby. I am going to put the cloche right on top and then I decided to add a Dollar Tree candle. I just love the simplicity of this and this is something I would keep in my house year round. I can see it in your eyes that you shake. The next option, this is gonna definitely be more of an Easter look. I'm using this wood riser I got a couple years ago when the Magnolia line first came out at Target. And I'm gonna use some of this scatter kind of egg greenery filler from Hobby Lobby. I got this for 50% off. And all I'm doing is just taking this really nice filler, putting it on the wood riser, and putting our cloche right on top of it using the Dollar Tree bin. Super easy, I love how neutral this is. And like I said, it's great for Easter and really throughout the spring season. Dollar Tree DIY number two is going to be this modern farmhouse faith sign using a Dollar Tree canvas. For this project, you will need an eight by 10 canvas from Dollar Tree or any size canvas that you may already have in your stash or that you want for this project. I am going to use the Dollar Tree poster stickers and I am going to lightly press them down. I'm going to spell out the words faith I do not want the letters to be black. I want them to be white since we'll be painting over this canvas. I thought it'd be great to almost use these as a stencil. So putting them down on the canvas and painting over them will give me that effect. Going in with Folk Arch Chalk Paint and Sage. Surprise, surprise. I have been obsessed with this color lately. Um, I'm probably late to the game on it. I'm sure like you're watching this and you're like, Nicole, I've known about this color forever. But I don't know, maybe I'm late to it, but I'm just absolutely loving it. So that is what I am going to do. And as always, my projects are meant for inspiration. So if you don't like a color or you don't like a certain font or something like that, you can always customize it to what your decor preference is. But since I actually decorate with a lot of the decor that I make, I just do it to my own style. And like I said, you are going to literally just paint right over these poster stickers. Um, these don't stick the greatest on the canvas, so just make sure that when you paint over them, you are careful that they don't move. And you're going to wanna make sure they're completely dry before lifting them. And since I forgot this, here is your friendly reminder to paint the sides of your canvas. That way it all looks cohesive and you don't have this nice like color on the front and then the random awkward white bare canvas sides on the side. So once everything is dry, I'm going to carefully peel the poster stickers, revealing the white font instead of the black. I did a light coat of the paint. If I don't mind it that it kind of looks a little like distressed or kind of, I don't know, not perfect. So that's what I went with. If you want more opaque, then by all means do two coats. 
So going in this random jar of wood beads that I have, I am going to use these Dollar Tree, no, not Dollar Tree. I'm so used to saying that. I'm gonna use these Hobby Lobby wood beads that do not have a hole. So these are perfect for pieces of decor like this. I'm just going to hot glue a line on the top and hot glue a line on the bottom, lining them up. The reason you see the Dollar Tree like crafting wood square beads is I was debating doing this with the square, but I just didn't like it. So let me know down in the comments actually, what would you have done? Would you have gone with like the rounded shape or would you have done a square? Um, I went with the rounded shape, I just kind of liked it better and I had just enough to go across. So I'm using this jute ribbon I got at AC Moore clearance a couple weeks ago and I'm loving it. I'm sure, again, if you're not new, you've seen the sage a lot, you've seen these wood beads a lot, the ribbon. I'm just hot gluing that on the bottom and the top. I just thought it complemented the wood beads and I really like how simple this is, but it definitely has that modern farmhouse look that I love so much. Look at me every time when phone call away And you're ready to be mine Dollar Tree DIY number three is this textured piece of wall decor, also modern farmhouse, but a fun way to upgrade a Dollar Tree picture frame and add some nice texture to a gallery wall or your home decor in general. Moving right along to this really textured sign, I got the inspiration from this from the Hobby Lobby website and I knew I had stuff in my craft room that I could replicate this pretty close. So again, I'm gonna go back to my handy dandy jar of wood beads. I'll be using some Dollar Tree nautical rope, as well as some jute ribbon, two different kinds that I have in my stash. This is a great project to really improvise, use whatever ribbon, rope, beads you may or may not have in your craft stash. And what I am using as the base of this is a piece of basswood, like scrap wood, that came in an assorted pack from Hobby Lobby. Um, I think I got it for like six or seven dollars. It comes with a whole bunch of different pieces of the basswood. It comes in strips, which is great for like outlining poster boards. I mean, honestly, you can use anything for this, a small picture, a piece of foam board, whatever you have. So this is so simple. There is no real technique or rhyme or reason to this. You're just gonna wanna go ahead and cut your rope, your ribbon to size, measure it to whatever the base is. And with whatever kind of pattern you're feeling, you're just going to hot glue the ribbon and rope and bead mix going all the way on whatever you're choosing as your base piece. Like I said, I'm using a scrap piece of basswood I had in my stash. I'm using different sizes of the wood beads and just kind of playing with the pattern, having really no exact method to this. Also made sure that I flipped over the scrap piece of wood and just trimmed any ribbon that may have been poking, not poking, been longer than the piece of scrap wood. There we go. And then really simple to apply this, I took some hot glue and then I took a Dollar Tree frame that already had some Hobby Lobby um, scrapbook paper in it, the shiplap print. This was from a project, oh my gosh, I don't know, months ago when I first started my channel. Hot glued it on there and that is it. I love that I was able to get a duplicate of the Hobby Lobby version of this using everything I already had in my craft room. And I love the way that this turned out. I actually like it better than the original and I have it here in the middle of a large boho modern farmhouse wall hanging that I made using Dollar Tree rugs, which I can also link down below in the description box in case you're interested. Tree DIY number four will be taking some scrap wood, adding some Dollar Tree wood plaques and baskets to create this really fun farmhouse floral arrangement. 
project, we will be using a piece of scrap wood and Dollar Tree supplies to make this really nice kind of farmhouse vintage planter. So the first thing you'll need is a piece of scrap wood. This is what I had on hand, and I'm using two of these white Dollar Tree bins. They come in a variety of sizes. This is the smaller of the sizes that they have. I will be mixing Waverly's Antique Wax and Folk Arts Chalk Paint in Parisian Gray. I love mixing these two. It just really gets a just kind of nice muddy gray color. And I'm going to paint this piece. One good coat is all you need for this. And again, I just love the mixture of these two colors. Also, this is a friendly reminder, don't forget to paint the sides of your wood. I forget to do this all the time. So make sure all four sides are painted. I didn't worry about the back because no one will be seeing it. And before we continue with the rest of the project, this video is part of the Open DIY Challenge, which is DIY Spring Decor hosted by Heidi Sambel over at Happily Thriving Heidi. I will have her channel as well as the playlist to this open challenge down in the description box. So when you're done watching here, you could see what everyone else came up with. I just love crafting for spring and I can't wait to see what everyone made. While our scrap wood is drying, I'm taking this wood plaque from Dollar Tree and some of this cottage white chalk paint from Folk Art. And I'm only going to paint the front of the wood plaque with the white. We will be outlining the rest in black. Let me know down in the comments if you have found these wood plaques. This was at a Dollar Tree that had a crafting section, but I have seen them at some of the Dollar Trees that don't, and they're just so cute, and there's just so many different possibilities for projects. So originally to outline, I was gonna use my Prismacolor paint pen in black, but it just wasn't doing the job on the parts of the wood that were kind of like, I don't know, not smooth. So I'm using this Apple Barrel black acrylic paint from Walmart and one of my just like paint sponge dabbers. And I'm going to outline the rest of the plaque with the black. I love black and white. It's just such a classic look and I thought it would look nice against the grayish color that we painted the scrap wood. Then applying a decal that I cut from another decal I made for a previous project. I love this, it's antique. It's in the Wild West font from defont.com. And you could totally use like a stencil or freehand, but I just thought that the decal would look nice. Now I'm also going to use my Cricut for the scrap wood part of this project, but I do have a free printable down in the description box below with a comparable font in case you don't have a Cricut and you would like to replicate this project. So I'm just going to apply this to the top of the project. I decided to go with white just to, again, kind of stand out against that muddy gray color that the scrap wood is in. I have been loving the Dollar Tree food scraper and mini chopper to transfer my vinyl. And in case you're interested, the Fresh and Market are in the Wild West font and the cursive is in Babette from the Cricut Design Space is the fun part to put the planter together. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball where I want to hammer in my first nail to hold the wire basket. These wire baskets, like I said, come in a variety of sizes at Dollar Tree. I went with the smaller to fit my scrap wood and I'm just going to, pretty simple, just use a hammer, nail it in, nail it in, nail the nail in and that holds the wire basket perfect. I'm going to hot glue. You can use wood glue if you want, but hot glue is fine. The antique plaque and put that right in the middle of my two planters or wire bins. <laughs> and I'm gonna repeat the same thing that I did for the top bin. Again, eyeballing the spacing for the bottom basket. I really like how this project turned out. Since I had most of the supplies already, it only cost me $3 in Dollar Tree supplies and I already had the scrap wood and the vinyl on hand. This is great for spring. You can transition it to year round and just change out the florals. The bad I knew I loved you. You had 
tree DIY number five is going to be a single tiered tray. This project will be using this sign from Dollar Tree, any sign will do, and this really pretty scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. So I am going to sand down with a Dollar Tree sponge, this, not the sand, the sparkles on the picture just so that they don't look bumpy with the scrapbook paper on top. Really simple, you've seen me do this in so many of my projects. I love scrapbook paper, that is like no surprise if you're not new here. Just trace the scrapbook paper and cut it out. Although since this sign is like a little bit more of like an intricate shape, I think this is called quatrefoil. I don't know, let me know down in the comments if you know the shape that this is. Just be careful cutting it. I almost like went too scissor happy and like destroyed the shape. So take your time and cut that out. Now, usually I use Mod Podge, but I ran out of it. So I've just been using some Elmer's glue and been painting with a foam brush, not painting, but smoothing out. There you go. The glue with a foam brush. And honestly, I like it just the same. If not better, I find the Elmer's glue to be a little bit more forgiving, but personal preference. So once I paint, I keep saying paint, but once I use the foam brush to disperse all of the glue, I'm just going to put my scrap paper right on top, smoothing out any bubbles. For the thrifted, or in my case, gifted part of this project, I'm going to use this like decorative box that my mom gave me. I used to have our TV remotes in it, but it's just too pretty to waste for TV remotes. So adding a little bit of hot glue, not too much, just on the brim of this box, I am going to line it with the glue and place the picture right on top to make a nice like decorative footed tray. And I love that I did this using a Dollar Tree picture and it's just, I don't know, I like it. Super cute and super easy. If I could hear my father's voice, he would tell me to move on. A little Dollar Tree DIY bonus. I'm going to show you how I took this Dollar Tree greenery, mixed it with a thrifted item to get a really nice budget friendly look. My mom actually gave this to me. She had this forever and was kind of bored of it and knew that I would repurpose it and that's what I did. So taking this folk art chalk paint in Parisian gray, I am going to do a mixture of kind of dry brushing but not. This has a lot of texture to this, so I added some paint. I know it looks really splotchy there. I promise I smooth it out. Um, I'm just gonna add some paint and dip my brush minimally. So I really want the paint to grab onto the texture and kind of fall where it may. So I was going for a distressed look and since this piece does have a lot of like grooves and texture to it, it kind of just gives a natural distress look just from adding the paint on top. And I did the same thing for the scroll. I really liked this gray color instead of white. I feel like it was bright but still complemented the warmth that you could still see underneath. And yeah, I just really love this piece. It's just super pretty. And I only did like one coat of paint on this. I really wanted a little bit of the original color to poke through like that green and kind of almost patinaed look. And I just think the gray really complements that. So for the Dollar Tree element to this project, I grabbed two of these leaf garlands. I only ended up using one and I wanted to drape that kind of on top of the scroll. Um, it just gives a really fresh spring look, but honestly, I plan on leaving this piece out year round. And you'll kind of see with this video, like I'm really into using Dollar Tree florals and greenery lately and displaying them in ways other than just putting them in a vase. So I thought that this was a fun way to use some Dollar Tree greenery. Right out of the bat, I knew I loved you. You had the sparkle in 
Dollar Tree DIY number six is going to give one of the Dollar Tree round mirrors a really nice and easy upgrade. Show you how to take one of these basic round mirrors, pair it with a thrifted item, and just really give it some more oomph. So my mom gave me this like medallion piece, I guess you can call it. I like it, I just don't like the color. So taking Adirondack White from Folk Art Chalk Paint and a Dollar Tree chip brush, which I'm absolutely loving for dry brushing, I'm doing just that. Just one simple dry brushed layer, having some of the bronze still poking through. And then taking the Dollar Tree mirror, which I actually used for a project a long time ago, but I did it in my compilation video, which I can link down below. Just dry brushing that as well, having a little bit of the brown color poke through that I previously painted it. And then applying this right to the medallion piece with some hot glue. That is it for this project. So I love the way that this came out, real life. This is my super messy dining room, but I love this. I love that I was able to take a Dollar Tree mirror that maybe just wasn't the size that I was wanting, layered it with a piece I already had in my home to just get a really budget-friendly, customized home decor look with a Dollar Tree mirror. A favorite song is on Dollar Tree DIY number seven is going to be a wall hanging using a Dollar Tree plunger, the wood dowel part. I love wall hangings. I could probably do an entire video of all the wall hangings I've made and ones that I still have ideas for. So I hope you like this one. The main star is a plunger and we're gonna use the wooden part to kind of act as a dowel. So we're gonna make a wall hanging. I'm using three different types of yarn. I had this on hand, just a basic, um, worsted weight yarn, which is this pink one, a thicker, and then a cotton. So to get the strands even, I'm taking a scrap piece of cardboard, wrapping around 10 times with color number one, and then I cut the bottoms and then they're folded in half. So you're gonna have six of color number one like that. For Color number two, this is gonna be our longer tassel. You wrap around once, instead of cutting on the bottom, you, you see me here, you wrap around twice actually, cut in the bottom, and then you fold in half with a longer piece. Then for the cotton yarn, I did the same thing I did for yarn number one, so this is yarn number three, although I wrapped it around 25 times, just to get a little bit of a thicker volume with that yarn, cut the bottom, while it's on the cardboard, cut all of the strands on the bottom and fold in half. And this is what the yarn looks like once everything is cut. So now it's time to wrap around our Dollar Tree plunger wood piece. So I'm gonna start with what is gonna be the longer of the strands, which is the thicker yarn. I'm just kind of looping around the wood. If you see here, I could not get the sticker off, but it's fine because the yarn covers it. So this is what it looks like with our middle piece. I love the texture of this, it's a bit thicker. And what I decided to do for the cotton yarn is take all 25 pieces and loop them in one knot. This just kind of gives a little bit of bulk and it has a difference with the longer piece of yarn and then for the pink I did it in groups of five. So I hope that made sense. I could put down in the description box below a better explanation of that in case you are um, the type of person needs to read it to understand it. But I'm just giving the yarn a trim, kind of eyeballing it, again keeping that middle piece of yarn or section longer. So I found these awesome wood beads at Hobby Lobby. They were different shapes and I thought they just definitely lended to that boho look. So taking the cotton yarn, I just knotted it on one side of the Dollar Tree wood piece from the plunger and then I just alternated the beads. Again, I went with a different shape. I left it unfinished. That's totally personal preference. You can use Dollar Tree um, beads that are the different colors depending on what color yarn you have. You can stain these beads but I thought they looked great unfinished and once I was done stringing the beads I just made a knot and looped it on the front of our wooden dowel and I loved how this turned out super boho farmhouse modern farmhouse and I love that I was able to use something 
such as a Dollar Tree plunger to get a nice sturdy wood piece. I've seen a few other YouTubers make these wall hangings, so I wanted to do my own variation of it. Time to laugh and time to heal. DIY is going to be even cheaper than a Dollar Tree DIY because we will be upcycling a oatmeal container. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> Our next project, again, drawing inspiration from the Kirkland's website. I loved this sconce that was $49.99, and I was like, um, no way am I paying that. So, plus I can't go out to the store anyway. <laughs> so, I decided, since the sconce had a bit of a curve to it, to use this oatmeal container from Aldi, and this thing was actually really sturdy. It took me like a hot minute to cut it in half, but I just cut the cardboard in half, I kept the curve on it because I needed that for the sconce. And then the bottom actually, I realized was a great place to kind of use as a like shelf for a candle. So I just trimmed that to size. I got these decals, these peel and stick decals from Target Dollar Spot months ago. These you will see when I get my laundry room finished. I'm almost there guys. Um, these is what, these. This is what, there we go, I used for the backsplash. And I thought that they would look nice against this. They are clear so you could see whatever the background is on them. But I actually liked it against the look of the cardboard. Um, you could totally paint it, but I mean, this is like a dirt cheap DIY for me, so I left it. Now to give our faux shelf, which is the bottom of the oatmeal container, more stability, I just took some craft sticks, cut them to size, and then hot glued them going first horizontally and then shorter pieces going vertically just to really give this faux shelf um, the ability to act as just that for a candle. Also, if you like Trash to Treasures, I will link down below some recent videos that I did with some upcycles and recycle items, turning them into decor in case you're interested in that. This is how it turned out. The shelf actually works perfect. I decided to put a little succulent on this and I have this on my dining room server. You could definitely put like something to hang it on the wall, but I mean, for an oatmeal container, you can't beat it. And technically, if you wanted to, you can get two sides of the oatmeal container once you cut it in half, so you can have a pair of sconces even. Be yours till the light. Dollar Tree DIY number nine is going to be this dish towel hook. Next Dollar Tree DIY will be using the bamboo cutting boards. I know these are difficult to find and you may not have them in your craft stash, but here are some other Dollar Tree um, options that you can use or honestly just whatever picture or sign you have on hand, that will do fine. So I'm just taking my ruler and marking an inch and a half on each side of the top and the bottom. Then applying some painter's tape over top those lines going more towards the middle. We will be painting the top and bottom. See, I messed up there. You wanna do it so it's more in the middle on top of the mark. We'll be painting with Folk Arts Chalk Paint and Sage. I am loving this color for spring and honestly year round. Um, I ended up giving this two coats of the chalk paint just to fully cover the bamboo cutting board. And let me know down in the comments if you like this color as much as I do. I'm really trying to just branch out from always using the same colors and I'm really enjoying this. So once the paint is dry, just carefully remove the painter's tape. And then I had this already. This was a decorative hook I got like months ago at Hobby Lobby on clearance. I thought that this would be great to hold a dish towel. So to secure the hook, we're using the Dollar Tree Super Gel, which comes in a two pack and I'm just applying a generous amount on the back of the hook and then pressing down and letting that dry. I'd let it dry for like a full day before I hung anything on it. Now I wanted to add another textural element to this. I always like doing that with my projects. I recently had found, well, maybe a couple weeks ago, this jute ribbon from the AC Moore clearance. So I just measured what I needed for the top and the bottom and applied that with a little bit of hot glue so that it did not seep through where the jute is open and then trimmed it to size. 
I have this by my fridge. I have it to hang a dish towel on. I just love the modern farmhouse-ness of this. It has a little bit of a boho look to it, and it's a great way to kind of like upcycle a bamboo cutting board or a sign from Dollar Tree or what you may already have on hand. Let it all out of me. Let it all out of me. For our last Dollar Tree DIY, this is going to be a textured take on one of the Dollar Tree glass jars and make it into a more like farmhouse piece of home decor. I'm gonna take this textured vase from Dollar Tree. I like that it's a little bit larger than some of the glass like jars you can get at Dollar Tree. Again, anything you have in your craft room is fine, even an upcycled like pasta sauce jar. I mean, I've used a ton of those in my projects. Anything you have, any glass jar. I just like this one because it had texture to it. I gave it two coats of Folk Arts White Adirondack. And originally I filmed this for a completely different video and I wanted to have the neck of this in that pewter chalk paint, what is it, Art Minds chalk paint from Michaels, there we go. I just wasn't really liking it. And then I decided to go back over that and kind of dry brush it with the white and then let me know if this happens to you. Like half, like I was doing this and I'm like, what, what am I doing? Like I don't like, <laughs> I didn't like it at all. It just was coming out sloppy and not the way that I wanted. So good old Walmart jute to the rescue. I just took my hot glue gun and I just wrapped the botched up neck of this jar that I <laughs> ruined with some jute. And I actually like this better. I love jute. I love texture. I say that in like all my videos, but it's what I like in my decor. So that is what I added to this Dollar Tree glass vase and just trimmed it and made sure I secured it with more hot glue. And then I had this buckle forever in my craft room. It's from Hobby Lobby. I thought that this would add just a nice extra element to it. I like that it was brown, so it was a pop of a different color against the white, and I just hot glued that to the front. So like I said, I used a Dollar Tree glass vase. You can use an upcycled one, whatever you have. But this is super simple. I like this as is for like a floral arrangement. You can even use this in your craft room to like store like pens or whatever. And yeah, super simple. And I was able to somewhat salvage it from whatever I was trying to do on the neck of this glass jar. <laughs> And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this top 10 farmhouse Dollar Tree DIYs part two. I will link part one down in the description box below as well as the original videos to all of these 10 farmhouse DIYs. So I hope you like this compilation style video. I have some more new DIYs coming up for you in the next coming weeks. So make sure you look out for those. I hope you all are doing well and staying healthy and safe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. We got this.